Well, how's everybody doing this beautiful morning? I hope everybody is doing just fine. Today, I want you to know something. I want to start off with like this right here with this message. I want to start off with a little hymn. Not going to go deep into it, but I just want to start it off. Because my message is going to be based on this, but you got to understand who Jesus is. And you got to know that Jesus is real. <clears throat> so it goes like this. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so, because he is real with me. Oh, real, real. Jesus is real with me. Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without him. That is why I love him so, because he is real with me. So today, I hope Jesus is real with you. I hope Jesus is really real with you. He's just not a part of your imagination, but he's your reality because he's my reality. I hope Jesus is your reality. But first, I want to give honor to God. I want to give honor to Jesus. I want to give praise for, I want to give honor to God and his son, Jesus Christ, for the power of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in us. I want to thank God for his words that leads us and guide us and direct us, that instruct us and teach us how to live this Christian life and how to honor God in all we do and how to believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. And because of that, we, we start living in God's grace. And that is a blessing in the name of Jesus. That is a blessing. But I have a message for you today. I think I have a pretty good message for you. But I know it is a good message for you if you take heed to it and apply it in your life. See, when I give a message to you, it's for you to take application. That means it's time for you to apply it in your life. That's why I bring it to you. You have me bring it to you so you can apply this in your life. You can go back and meditate on it. You can build your life with Jesus closer. You can have a closer relationship with Jesus. You can have a closer relationship with God. You can have a closer relationship with God's Word. You can have a closer relationship with the Holy Spirit because you will commune with them. You will commune with them. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. So the title of this message is saying, Run the Race of Faith. Run anyway, the Race of Faith. So in order to run the way the race of faith, that means you really got to live in faith. And then you got to apply your life in what you believe in. You understand? That's what you got to do. Apply your life in what you believe in. Now, if you believe in Jesus, that means you're going to live by Jesus. And that means you're going to put your faith in Jesus. So you got to run the race of faith. You got to run it. You must run the race of faith always in the name of Jesus. You got to put your faith in Jesus in order to run this race of faith. You see, then it goes on to say, now it goes on to say, there's no other way to run the race. Christian perspective. Coming from a Christian perspective, there's only one way to run this race. You got to put your faith in Jesus. Know this, Jesus is the author and finisher of your faith. Also know Jesus is the beginning and the ending of your faith, coming from the Christian perspective. So otherwise, what I'm telling you, you got to channel your faith in Jesus. He's the beginning of your faith and he's the ending of your faith. So your faith has got to be in Jesus. He's the author of your faith. He's the finisher of your faith. So you know your faith has got to be in Jesus. Do you solemnly have your faith in Jesus? Do you wholly have your faith in Jesus? Do you completely understand me? 
do you completely have your faith in Jesus? See, that's why I started this off with real, real, Jesus is real with me. See, you got the only way you got the only way you're gonna really be able to put your faith in Jesus, Jesus gotta be real with you. Jesus got to be real with you for you to sincerely put your faith in Jesus. He can't be a figment of your imagination. He can't be just some words that you heard and they say put your faith in. They say put your faith in Jesus. And you say, well, I'm putting my faith in Jesus. But it ain't working. But the question is, now that I would ask you is, is Jesus real to you? So you can hear the name Jesus. You can know everything about Jesus from the word of God. But if he don't be real to you, you're not going to be able to put your faith in Jesus sincerely. So Jesus got to become real with you in order for you to run this race of faith in Jesus Christ. You must run the Therefore, you must build your faith life in Jesus Christ. You must build your faith life in Jesus Christ. I'm talking to you today because I want you to get this message. Because it's so important that you run this race of faith. But the only way that you can run this race of faith that I'm talking about, Jesus got to be real to you and you got to put your faith in Jesus. You got to believe in Jesus. You got to believe that Jesus is real. <laughs> you got to believe that Jesus is real. You got to receive or accept within yourself that Jesus is real. And when you know that, then you will commit to Jesus. And if you commit to Jesus, you will run the faith. You will run the race of faith that you have in Jesus. Then you must trust in Jesus. All this dealing with faith. And then you must trust in Jesus. You understand? And then when you get done with that, you got to have confidence in Jesus. You got to have confidence in Jesus. You got to be assured within yourself that Jesus is real. When Jesus become real with you, then you can run the race of faith in Jesus. But he got to become real with you. And then you got to be fully persuaded that Jesus is real. So today I ask you, or you need to ask yourself, is Jesus really real with you? Or is Jesus just something I hear people talk about and I go to church and listen to, but I haven't really made Jesus real with me? Well, today, if you haven't made Jesus real with you, I'm telling you today is the day to make him real with you, within your heart, within your mind, within your every being. You got to make Jesus real with you so you can run the faith, so you can run the race of faith in Jesus Christ. Run the race of faith in Jesus Christ. You must run the race of faith in Jesus, or may I say, I'm going to break this down to you because all this is still established around Jesus. Or may I say, you may, you must run the race of faith in God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the new covenant, and God's words of truth. And God's words of truth. That is the only way that you're going to be able to run the race of faith in Jesus. That's the only way. The New Covenant or New Testament, whichever one you choose to call it, is built on God's grace, not on God's law. See, the Old Covenant was built on God's law, but the New Covenant is built on God's grace by faith in Jesus Christ. Did you get that? The Old Covenant is built on God's law. But the new covenant is built on God's grace Ooh. by faith 
in Jesus Christ. So otherwise, what I'm telling you, you cannot be established into God's grace without faith in Jesus Christ. So if you want to receive God's grace, you got to run the run. You got to run the race of faith in Jesus Christ. So are you ready to live a life in Jesus Christ when you run in this race of faith that's in Jesus Christ? So you have to put your faith in the author and finisher of your faith. Then you got the beginning and the ending of your faith. Have you done that today? Have you really put your faith in Jesus Christ? Do you believe, receive, or accept Jesus Christ? Do you commit and trust Jesus Christ? Do you have confidence in Jesus Christ? Are you persuaded within your heart about Jesus Christ? You understand if you want to run this race of faith that they talk about in the word of God, that's in Jesus Christ. That's in Jesus Christ. So now, I want to take you through a few Bible verses. I want to take you through a few Bible verses. Like I said, I just want to talk to you a little bit. I just want to talk to you a little bit this morning. But the first one I want to go to is, uh, it talk about nowhere to put your faith. The first thing you got to do in this, you got to know where to put your faith. Because we put our faith in a lot of different things. But today, I'm finna tell you, or I'm finna inform you. I'm finna let you know where to put your faith. Go with me to Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight or burden in the sins which does so easily beset us or surround us or ensnare us, and let us run with patience with patient the race that is set before us. Patient here is endurance, so let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So let me read that to you again. Wherefore, seeing we also are surrounded about with so great a cloud of witness, talking about the, the people of the past that had the faith, that kept the faith, let, they, they, they are witness, let us lay aside every weight, every weight is every burden, any burdens that we have, and the sin which does so easily beset us or, or surround us or ensnare us. He said, let us lay aside every weight, every burden, and the sins which does so easily beset us. Let's quit living in sin. Let's quit letting these sins trap us up. And let us run with patience. And with this patience word here is endurance. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The race that is set before us. He said, let's endure. He said, let's run this race. Let's, let's run this race and let's don't give up. And don't let the burdens or sins hinder us. Let's endure. Let's continue to run this race. Then he said, while you're running this race, understand me. But then he goes on. He said, while you're running this race. He said, when you're running this race, he said, looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. He said, now we're going to run this race. Hear me. He said, we're going to run this race. And we're going to endure in this race. And we're not going to let sin ensnare us. And we're not going to let burdens destroy us. Because we're going to run this race with endurance. We're not going to give up looking to the author and finisher of our faith, who is Jesus Christ. 
who is Jesus Christ. So when you're running this race, you got to understand that you're looking at Jesus. You got to understand that your focus is on Jesus, not on yourself, not on the world, not on your mama, not on your daddy, not on your brothers, but it's on Jesus. It's not on your money. It's not in your house. It's not on your car. It's not on your job. It's Jesus. Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. So in order to run this race, too, in the name of Jesus, in order to run this race, you got to keep your faith in Jesus. In order to keep your faith in Jesus, he says looking, he said looking, so looking is focusing on Jesus. So you focusing on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. So in order to run this race and to run it good, you know that your faith has got to be in Jesus and nothing else. And nothing else. He said it right here. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame, not liking the shame. It in is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So that means Jesus is right there with God on the throne. He's on the right hand of God on the throne of God. He's right beside God right now in the name of Jesus. But in order to run this race, you got to keep your focus on the author and finisher of your faith or the beginning and the ending of your faith, which is Jesus. Now, did you want to run this race of faith? Do you really want to run this race of faith? If you want to run this race of faith, who do you keep your focus on? Who is your faith focus on? Where is your faith directed? He said that faith has got to be on Jesus in the name of Jesus. So that's the first thing you got to do. You know where to put your faith. Know where to put your faith. So I just told you where you put your faith. You put your faith in Jesus. Uh, you put your faith in Jesus. Then he said, once you put your faith in Jesus, I say, run to win the crown of life. Run to win the crown of life. So how do you run to win? How do you run to win the crown of life? Go with me to 1 Corinthians. 9, 24, 7. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 through 27. And it says, Know ye not that they which run in, run in a race run all, but one receive a prize. So when you run in a race, uh, in the, in, the, in the contest, in the sports, you know, you're running that race, but you're running to win a prize. You're running to win a prize. So run that ye may attain. So he said, when you're running this race, he understand what I'm saying. He said, when you're running this race, you are running to win. <laughs> He said, run this race to win. Don't run this r race to lose. Run this race to attain. Run this race to win. Are you running the race to win? Are you running the race to win? That's what I need to know. No, not I need to know. That's what you need to know. Are you running this race to win or are you just participating in the race? and don't care where you place. See, I'm in this race to win. I am not in this race to lose. I don't know about you. 
Then it goes on to 25 and it said, And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, they do it to attain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown, a righteous crown. I call the righteous crown the crown of life, but it's the righteous crown. It's in, in every man that strives for mastery, you know, to be an expert at what you do, to have no faults at what you do, is temperate. It's temperate. So that means he has self-control. So that means you got to have some type of self-control in order to master something. In order to master something. In all things. He said he's had self-control in all things. Now they do it to attain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. So otherwise, he's telling you in order to attain, you got to keep self-control. And you got to keep your self-control toward your faith in Jesus Christ in order to run this race. Because when you know you keep your faith in Jesus Christ, you'll be like Paul, you say, and you'll know for yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. First John said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You understand, because I learned that I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And because I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me, I have self-control through the power of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in me. And I'm going to run this race to win that crown, that crown of righteousness. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, he's not running in doubt. So far I, not as one that beat it to the air. And he said, I'm not just imaginary fighting. I'm not just hitting a person in front of me, a shadow boxing, making more up to date for you. I'm not sitting around just shadow boxing. You know, I'm actually out here fighting and I'm winning this crown. See, I got in the contest. Uh, and when I get in this contest of following Jesus, he said, I'm going to be a winner and I'm going to achieve or I'm going to attain what I'm going out to win win that trophy that I want. I'm going to win it in the name of Jesus. And I'm blessed because of that. And I'm blessed because of that. Jesus always look out for me. Jesus always look out for me and Jesus always look out for you. That is what you got to know. Jesus is always present. He is always with you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But now I must move on. I got something in this thing messing me up again. Yeah. How do I get rid of this job? Excuse me for a moment. Something popped up on my screen. Stop me from running my video, but be here. Still hang with me because I got to get this message out to you. In the name of Jesus, it's not going to stop the word of God. Uh, Satan is busy. He always trying to interfere because he know when you're bringing the truth out there, he want to stop it. But I bless that wonderful name, Jesus. It's not going to be stopped because I'm running this race of faith. And me running my race of faith is teaching, helping others in, in, in whatever fashion I can. So I got to run this race of faith. No matter, no matter what tries to stop me, I still got to run in the name of Jesus. Uh, then he says, uh, like you, shadow boxing, beating the air, you understand? He said, no, I'm in the rain. I'm really doing this. I'm standing here. I'm fighting, but I'm fighting with faith. You understand? I'm fighting with faith to attain. So I'm not going to give up. 
I'm not going to quit. I'm going to slip a little. I'm going to block a little. I'm a counter. I'm a move. I'm a maneuver. But I'm going to keep my faith in Jesus because that's who I use. So because I got my faith in Jesus, I want you to know now that I got on the whole armor of God, a breast, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, in the name of Jesus, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, uh, truth, uh, all this. It's the armor of God, and I'm going to fight with faith. I'm going to run with faith. I'm going to fight with faith in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, even though I had a little interruption, we still good. Now we go to three. When you run, stay on the course. When you run this race, you got to understand that you got to stay on the course in the name of Jesus when you run this race. Go with me to Galatians 5, 4, and 9. Galatians 5, 4 through 9. 4 through 9. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are fallen by grace. So if you're trying to be justified by the law, <laughs> you are you have failed from grace. See, remember I told you at the beginning, the only way to live in God's grace is you got to have your faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of the righteousness by faith. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. By faith, not by law. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by law. Still faith. You got to stay in the faith. You got to run the race of faith. You got to run the race of faith. In order to run the race of faith, you got to stay in faith and you got to put your faith in Jesus. Then it said, but faith which worketh by love. So he said, well, even with this faith, I want you to work it with love. I want this faith to be built on love too. Then he said, ye did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So he's telling these people in Galatians, you was running a good faith. You was running, you was running the race of faith good. But then they came talking about the law, and it hindered them, and it confused them because they lost focus on the author and finisher of their faith, who is Jesus Christ. He said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? So they was taking them away from the truth. They was taking them away from the new covenant. They was trying to have them run, live by the law. But Paul said, no. You got to keep the faith. This persuasion comes not of him that calleth you. He said the people that's bringing the law to you, that's what, that's what it's telling me in Galatians. The people that's bringing the law to you, they are not of God. They are not of Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. Not of him that called you. God called you. Then he said a little leaving, leaving is the whole lot. Then he said when you let a little... When you let a little sin in or a little law in, it can mess up the whole lump because it starts spreading through. But God came to see to keep the cut short. But I'm coming to tell you, and I'm coming to let you know, you got to keep running well. Yeah, there's people out there that's going to be trying to hinder you. There's people out there that's going to be trying to stop you. There's things that's going to happen in your life that's going to try to that's going to try to hinder you from running your for running the race of faith. They're going to try to stop you. They're going to try to stop you. But you can't let them stop you. You might run into a hinder here. You might run into a hinder there. But you know what? You might run into an offense here. But you got to still run 
the race of faith in Jesus Christ. You still got to keep your faith in Jesus. You still got to run that race of faith and watch God's grace work in your life in the name of Jesus. So it goes on to the next one. When you run, stay on course. Then this one says, uh, Paul says, give up your old life to live in the new life of faith in Jesus Christ. Philippians 3. Philippians 3. Go with me to Philippians 3. And we're going to do verses. Seven, eight, nine, thirteen, and fourteen. Just doing a little teaching today. But what things were gained to me, those I kind of lost for Christ. He said, Paul was saying, all them nice things that I had when I was a leader. Of the scribes or the Pharisees, I can't remember the exact one, or the Pharisees. He said, But the things which were gained to me, these things he gave, those I kind of lost for Christ. But he said, All them things that I thought was gained, I count them as lost for Christ. So he gave it all up for Jesus Christ because he kept his faith in Jesus Christ. So there's some things in your life you're going to have to let go in order to run the race of faith in Jesus Christ. There's some things in your life you're going to have to release in order to run that race for Jesus Christ. That's what Paul is saying right there. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but done nothing that I may win Christ. So otherwise, Paul said, everything I thought was important to me, everything that I valued, everything, I let it go to win Jesus Christ. He said, I let it go to win Jesus Christ, to win Jesus Christ. You want to win Jesus Christ? You got to run the race of faith in Jesus Christ. And then you start getting the knowledge of Christ. That's what Paul's talking about. He said he got the knowledge of Christ. But he had to give some stuff up. He had to let it go. And he had to run the race of faith. And that faith had to be in Jesus Christ. And then he goes on in verse 9 and said, And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law. See, he had the righteousness of the law, which was his own righteousness, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So now he got the righteousness of God by faith. Understand, not by law. He got the righteousness of God by faith. So he started putting his faith in God. He started putting his faith in Jesus. The author and finisher of your faith, the beginning and the end of your faith. And then he started getting the righteousness of God. But he only got the righteousness of God by faith, not by law, not by people, not by peers, not by people you associate with, but by faith in Jesus Christ. That's how he got the righteousness. Then he goes on to say, brother, 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehend or accomplished or achieved or completed, but this one thing I do. <laughs> Now, this is the part I wanted to do. This is the one part I wanted to do. This is the part I want you to get to. But there's one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. See, sometimes you got to forget them things that are behind. Now, you got to let them go. <laughs> you say, them things behind you, you got to forget them things behind. And reaching forth onto those things which are before. And he said, now... Nah, I had to forget them things behind me, the peoples and places or things that I once was involved with. I probably, I had to cut them loose. And then I had to start going for the things before me 
And them things that before me are in Jesus Christ. So otherwise, I forget everything that was behind me. Well, I'm saying they don't hold a place in my mind. They don't hold a place in my heart no more. The way that I used to live, the way that I used to do things, I let it all go. Because now I live in the newness of life by the faith I have in Jesus Christ. By the faith I have in Jesus Christ. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. <laughs> For you that's I in Christ Jesus. My paraphrase. And understand that. So Paul said I gave all that up. I gave my past up. For Jesus Christ. So now he put his faith in Jesus Christ. You got to understand this. I'm a little confused. You got to understand as I give my life to Jesus Christ. So otherwise it said give. The next one was. I probably won't read. But give up your old life to live in the new life of faith in Jesus Christ. Then it goes on, always do spiritual exercise. You got to always do spiritual exercise. And you can find that in 1 Timothy 4. Start off with verse 1, jump up to 4 through 8. I want you to go back and read. I want you to go back and read that. I want you to understand that. But always do spiritual exercise. Spiritual exercise is first you got to have your faith in Jesus Christ. And you got to keep your faith in Jesus Christ. You need to study your word. You need to meditate on your word. You need to apply the word in your life. You got to communicate with God. So that means you got to pray. Paul said pray without ceasing. These are spiritual exercises. Living to walk in righteousness. Now, Paul tells us to think on certain things. So all of these are spiritual exercises. And you got to put them to work in your life. And you got to continue to do it. But now I want you to go to um, fight the good fight of faith. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4. Second Timothy 4, 6 to 8. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul said he's getting ready to go away. I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Understand what Paul just said right there is powerful. Paul said, I have fought a good fight of faith. He said, I have fought a good fight. He said, I have fought a good fight. He didn't give up. I have finished my course. I have done what I had to do. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And between all that, he said, I have kept the faith. The faith in Jesus Christ. He kept the faith in the new covenant. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. He said, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which which the Lord, the righteous judge, should give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. All them that love his appearance. So guess what? You're on a journey down here, and you're going to always have to fight the good fight of faith. You always going to have to endure. So you got to run this race of faith. In Jesus Christ. You got to run this race of faith in Jesus Christ and not give up in the name of Jesus. But now for you that doesn't understand Jesus, or may I say doesn't believe in Jesus, or for you that wants to be saved, I have a verse that I like to read at the end of my message, and I'm going to give you this verse. And I want you to take time out and read it and study yourself. But this is how you get saved. This is how you get saved. 
Go with me to Romans. Romans 10. 9 and 10. That if, it's Romans 10, 9 and 10. It said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You have to confess that God has raised him from the dead. And you have to believe that God has raised him from the dead in order to be saved. In order to be saved. But then after that, then he goes on to 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. But now, once you believe that you say, once you believe that you say, now you want to live in righteousness. Now you want to live in God's righteousness. Now you want to live in righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So otherwise, what I'm trying to tell you, you'll know when you say. You're going to know when you say. And God will carry you through. He will bless you. He will get you through everything in your life. You just got to keep your faith. You got to run the race of faith in Jesus Christ. I hope this message touched you. I hope this message bless you. As you know, I'm on YouTube and I'm on Twitter. Feel free to follow me there too. In the name of Jesus, feel free. Feel free to follow me there. I want you to know that God's love you. And I want you to know that I love you. In the name of Jesus, be blessed always and forever. In the name of Jesus.